Well, of course, you know, China and the U.S. have very different ideas about intellectual property rights, right? Um, about copying and things like that, imitation. Um, you know, very foundationally, um, things that in the U.S. are completely taboo, um, in China it might be wrong or maybe even not legal, but they're not taboo, right? And we can, you can ask yourself, well, why is that? You know, why is, um, is building a building that looks just like a chateau in France, you know, why do they, we not do that here in the West? We, you know, we might do it, but it'd be an amusement park. It'd be something, you know, if you did, it was, you know, it's tacky, right? So why do we think it's tacky where um, in the East are considered um, fine? So, you know, you can have a, a, a very elaborate um, copy of a, of a French chateau. Um, you can pour $50 million into it. You can use the exact stone that they used in the original and, and you know, and have this copy in every way perfect. And in China, that's seen as a great thing, right? Like no one would say, you're kidding, you spent $50 million on this copy. Um, in the US, we would never do that, right? And why is that? It's because we have two different models of self. Quite the contrary, um, you know, if it sees something which is great, it says, well, I'll do that too. You know, it's homage. And this goes right down to the educational level. I mean, so the idea, you know, in, in our education, we're very much trying to coax out of people, you know, their unique vision, right? Um, it, you know, in Asia, the idea that actually there are many great ideas kind of out, out there all around you in your culture, and that maybe before you think about how you can put your own stamp on things, maybe you should absorb those ideas um, is very important. So things that to us, you know, you just don't do, you know, to them, it's like, well, well why not? You know, they have a much more playful attitude, I will say, toward these things. And so in order to absorb th those ideas, well, how do you do that? often you imitate, right? So painters start, they, they find a great painter, um, a painter um, wh with whom they feel simpatico, and they, they copy those paintings. And what, they're, what are they doing? You know, when we think of copying, we think of it as a very kind of mechanical process. Um, but actually, they're trying to internalize the greatness of this painting. So it's, it, to them, it's not, it's not a mechanical process, it's an organic process. You know, they're, they're, they're taking in this influence. Ultimately, they want to add to the great tradition that they are, have signed up for, and ultimately, they want their their um, contribution um, to be theirs and you know to be singular. But they see that as a coming after they have mastered their great tradition, right? And mastering it through imitation, through memorization, is completely fine. And like I say, it's a sign of homage. Now you can only imagine a culture where there is this very long-standing tradition of education through imitation and through copying. Um, you can only imagine a co to, to take a, tra uh, a tradition like that and to sort of say to this culture, well, actually, um, every time you imitate something, that's actually taboo. I mean, they get it intellectually. You can tell them, but very foundationally, that's not who they are. And that's not, you know, these are not ideas that, that they have had. It would be like telling us, like, every time you pick up a spoon, you know, that, that spoon is copyrighted. You know, you really, you know, you really should pay a little fee every time you use that spoon. They would just think that, well, that is really very strange, right? Um, so I think that um, when, we, when we look at these ideas, we see a very big foundational split um, between the two cultures. Um, and, it, you know, I, really copying is only one of the many areas where you see um, very divergent ideas.